Uh, my name is Amar Jyot Singh and I'm talking to Pranav Dhingra in New Delhi. And uh, Pranav has some questions about uh, licensing to practice law in Canada after becoming PR. Is that the question that you have, Pranav, or something else? Uh, that's absolutely the question I had, sir. Thank you. Good. So are you a practicing lawyer in New Delhi? Uh, actually, sir, right now I'm in, I'm in my final semester of law school. Where? I'm in, I'm studying law from CCS University in Merit. What is the name of this university? What, what is it called? Uh, it's called CCS. It stands for Chaudhary Charan Singh. I like, I like the way Indian people, they abbreviate everything which they, they, they don't want to bring, <laughs> they don't want to, they don't want to take the name of Chaudhary Charan Singh, so they have make it a CCS, so, you know. So this is a law school that you are passing out next year or this year? I am passing out this year. Okay, and uh, you are also an applicant to immigrate to Canada uh, soon. Yes, so I'll be applying as soon as I am done with my law. Okay, and uh, what is your interest in uh, in practicing law in Canada since you do not have much experience practicing law in India? Um, so actually, uh, here in India, I I have worked in the legal industry, and uh, basically you can, you, I have. You can you can sit down, sit down. Otherwise, the voice will shake. Just sit down, don't move. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine now. Yeah. So you have uh, experience working in uh, practice of law in India? Not yet, I guess. Uh, so actually, I have experience working as a legal assistant. You're okay. an advocate. Okay. Yes. That's fine. So, that... so you are you are looking to become a lawyer in in Canada. So the best uh, way is to uh, contact the just like you have Delhi Bar Association and you know I'm sure other bar associations in most uh, states in, in India. Similarly, in Canada, uh, our provinces, they are not called states, they are called province. Uh, so whichever province that you want to live in, that you should apply for a law license in that province. So for example, if somebody was going to Toronto, so the law society in, in Ontario is the one which governs mm -hmm issuance of law license to somebody who wants to practice law. Uh, with that regard, I just want to keep the, uh, uh, you know, uh, this discussion simplistic because otherwise it become, if I start comparing with the requirements of all the provinces, this may, it may become a little, little more hectic. But uh, can you see on the screen uh, something that uh, you can see on the screen? Yes, sir. I can. Okay, so this is this is the website of uh, Law Society of Ontario, and mm -hmm. it te it tells you everything you know how to become a lawyer. So I'm, you know, right on that on that sub page where it, mm -hmm. it talks about information for new lawyers, and it tells you how to do everything. So how to apply for a new licensee and every everything. All right. So let's uh, let's jump ahead. Let's see if I can get to the bottom of for the new lawyers who are not. So it is very easy if if you have if somebody has uh, studied law in in Canada. So it is very easy because their law school is accredited and they can quickly, you know, uh, do the requirements of the, of the law school. But if you are not, then this is how you will go. You will go to this page. You are looking at it right now, how to become a lawyer in Ontario, and it tells you everything. So the first one is meet the academic requirements, which is complete a LLB program for approved school in Ontario or other province to obtain. So that's that's fine. So it's not not yet for you. And let's go to and there's there's everything on the licensing process. There are two license examinations, hands on experimental training, good character requirement and call to bar, everything, you know, uh, it should be done in three licensing years. So there's a fee system as well and pass the examination and everything. So it's, it's very clear. Now, what happens if you are not from, not from Canada, if you are from overseas, uh, that is what we are, we are looking at and let's see what goes on. So if you look at, for example, um, a certificate of qualification, which is, I think, Let's take a look. Law school graduates, law school graduates. Here it is. Can you see on the screen? Yes, by the NCA. 
Yeah, graduates of international or non-accredited Canadian law schools. There's a career map and there's an NCA process. And then, of course, after NCA, you do a Law Society of Ontario lawyer licensing process. And of course, once you then it tells you how to provide legal services to your clients and so. So there is a there's a something called career map for international. Let's take a look. Uh, if I can open this up, I can see on the screen for you. Uh, let's open up. It's opening. It's little. So here, can you see this in the screen? Sure. Yeah, this is called a career map for internationally educated lawyers, and it tells you everything what you need to know. So what I will do is I will post this PDF document at the bottom of the of the link on the on this video. And you can read through it and then, you know, go to sleep if you're bored. <laughs> so it tells you everything, what courses to do, how to meet those courses. You may be missing some uh, equivalence courses also or missing something which is related to Canada. Then you can do those courses in the Canadian law school, whatever you're missing. And, and that's it. Once you have this, this uh, you are you're good to go. So this is this is a nutshell. Uh, nutshell the the process to become a lawyer. I think what you were also mentioning that if you do some kind of courses for immigration, uh, yes, then sir. then uh, do you have to do law license uh, of this kind? No. So uh, no. Uh, immigration. Please, uh, my, uh, sorry, please go. Immigration practice is very different from uh, from doing uh, uh, licensure of of lawyers because lawyers can do pretty much any practice of law, most commonly are real estate, bankruptcy, contracts, criminal, even immigration and other 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 factors. Uh, but for immigration practice, you don't need to become the lawyer here. You can do those courses and then take a, another immigration examination by a body called ICCRC and then become um, may become licensed and then then you can practice immigration. But uh, that does not allow you to represent clients in the court. You can only represent them to the immigration, um, the department, the uh, immigration appeal, uh, you know, other uh, CBSA, Service Canada, and, and those those uh, organizations. But you can, you will not be un, be able to take the clients for immigration matter, for example, like a judicial review into the federal court of Canada. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. So thank you so much for all the information, firstly. And uh, actually, my question goes a little more deeper than that. Okay. So let's, let's look at a question. What's the question? Sure, sir. So basically, what I wanted to inquire about was that, uh, like in India, the process is that once uh, a student is graduated from law school, yeah, and he registers him, registers himself with the bar, he is not allowed to participate in any other kind of profession. He can only be a, he can only be an advocate. And if he wants to uh, go into any other profession, then he'll have to get his names off the rolls of the bar. So what I... Yeah, that condition does not exist in Canada as far as I know. Uh, I know many lawyers who are not only practicing lawyers, but also are running their own business uh, simultaneously. So. Uh, just the practice of law does not uh, exclude you from uh, from any professional activity beside the bar itself. So basically, if I'm enrolled to the Law Society of Ontario, simultaneously I can also enroll into the ICCRC, right? Well, there, there will not be any need. Uh, there's no need to become the... If you are uh, a member of Law Society of Ontario, that, that means you are mm -hmm. a full practicing lawyer. There's absolutely no need uh, to take membership of ICCRC because lawyers can do what uh, ICCRC members uh, uh, do and more. But ICCRC members uh, do only specific, like limited to immigration. They don't do real estate. They don't do other things. So. Uh, you become like a granddaddy of all. You don't even have to go to small uh, cubicles of immigration. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you so much for the information, sir. Uh, so, so basically, I've been following your channel since the last two years. And all the information that I've grasped about Canadian immigration 
is from your standpoint and uh, i've had a couple of friends who have been scammed uh, related to immigration and they've spent a lot of money and it really like i can understand their plight and it really saddens me that uh, scammers are like targeting desperate people who want to immigrate from one country to another and uh, then uh, one day i found you and uh, you were really addressing the problem and uh, i think that's really appreciable i really appreciate that and uh, that's why even i even when i migrate to canada uh, i wanted to be an immigration lawyer and i wanted to help those in need well of course uh, there are this is not a uh, new news about you know people being scammed uh, on the pretext of um of you know um helping them for canada immigration yesterday itself i think one of your uh, local regional newspaper dainik jagran had a big uh, uh, article about you know many companies many so called consultants in india are using the uh, credentials of uh, iccrc lawyers or other uh, registered consultants mm. uh in order to impress clients and you know trying to take money but you know this happens all the time but you know it's uh in law is always uh, the more you know uh the, the better it is uh, that you know you will under try to understand yes, the situation sir. and can maybe possibly help help your own situation uh, avoiding fraud but i have uh, one question for you uh, yes, uh before before we conclude this is that um in in new delhi where you are you must have yes, met or known a lot of lawyers who practicing law and different uh, things in in new delhi do clients uh pay to the lawyers for a consultation fee for example uh if you are a, a criminal lawyer in in new delhi and somebody has a criminal case and criminal the problem and when they come to you do they do they avoid paying a consultation fees to discuss your problem or lawyers do they charge consultation fee or this is not a norm just like in us and canada uh actually sir uh, i think it's the same around the world basically if someone needs a good advice or good consultation they are always willing to pay a fee and Correct. lawyers here do charge a fee and uh, like the clients pay willingly they don't have any problem doing that yeah but we also have people who kind of want to avoid the fees we yeah. always have those kind of people but uh, if a client really needs good representation then they shouldn't avoid paying the fee there was there was another uh, rampant practice uh, i know last time i i was uh, aware of it because i left new delhi in uh, 1994 it's been 26 years now Uh, okay. what what i was told by by many lawyers in in india was that they are not allowed to advertise uh yes sir advocates are not allowed to advertise per so, se ad, so advocates if the advocates are not allowed to advertise how will they uh, be known to the potential clients that you know they they can be approached how how will how will a client know that who is the best lawyer in delhi to go uh other than word of mouth so most of it is through referrals only people refer one lawyer and it's like that yeah, yeah. okay all right thank you very much for it hey i i hope i have answered your question yes so uh, you asked absolutely... me the the reason the reason i i picked up the discussion to be done public and so that other people can watch this is that i get a lot of inquiries from uh potential uh, applicants for law practice uh, in in canada and they always wonder how can they become lawyers in canada so i thought you know this is a good discussion to showcase uh, the requirements so that they can follow this independently sure that's amazing sir that's awesome. take care thank you you too sir keep up the good work bye bye, bye, -bye. take bye. care